I don't know. You guys have been going through so much. And, like, I just really wanted to show you, like, these are the notes that I'm working with. And, like, I know I have more notes scattered somewhere else. Like, in a diary somewhere or something. And just, I'm, like, fried and exhausted and overwhelmed and overworked. And, like, under-nurtured. Like, there's a lot of people who are absorbing and using me and, like, things like that. But, like, there's a limit of my abundance. And in some of it is because I haven't allowed it. Like, I haven't, like, people have offered to help me out, but I won't accept that I need help. Or, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Stuff like that's happening. And then, like, I'm kind of continuing suffering. And, yeah, like, me suffering means that, like, I bring my suffering to the table and it's all that I have to serve instead of, like, coming from a place of love. And, like, a lot of it symbolizes me, like, being in fear. Like, because I fear, like, what I have to do and deal with. Like, I shut down, run away, and go to other people. And then at the same time, when I'm with other people, I kind of shut them down and run away from them because it's a symbolism of me running away from myself. And I'm in this deep process of integration while I attempt to create this shadow work video. I feel like I'm right there, you know, like I'm so right there. I felt like today I had finally gotten everything. Now I'm trying to make everything into one piece. And yeah, I'm trying to like pick up the other pieces. Like there's some other pieces somewhere, I'm sure, scattered in the book somewhere. Like other diaries and stuff that I'm going to have to like look around and try to find. And like... The biggest thing of all the symbolism here is that I need to like recenter myself and like really take care of myself. I'm not exercising these practices and I'm having all these excuse and narratives and the narrative is kind of just keeping me away from myself. You know, it's distracting me because apparently I really like the story because I say my ego says and thinks that it takes care of me and in some levels it does because it keeps me away from the pain. That is like stuck within me that only I have to deal with that nobody else cares about unless like, <laughs> I don't know, unless they're attached to me, I don't know, or if I'm affecting them, that's also the other shadow of that, like, um, I can say that I want love, I want love, I want love, I want love, I'm telling everyone how much I want love. But then when you show up, like, I'm coming from all this fear and all this confusion and self-rejection and hatred for myself that, like, as soon as you're around me, like, you're going to pick up on that energy and you're not going to want to be around me and subconsciously you won't really even know why. But the truth is because I hate myself and if you really love yourself, like, instantly the energy isn't around me. I feel like that's also why I don't really have a support network. I don't really have people who are really financially supporting me and really being there for me and really, like you know, like seeing me as them, like they really want me to do well. And they're showing me that they want me to do well, because like, they're showing me who I am. And like, they're helping me, they're pushing me, they're motivating me to do what I choose to do, instead of telling me what they think I should do, or what they want me to do. Instead, they're like helping me figure out ways that I can exercise and be myself and like be happy by like finally doing what I enjoy. But the whole part here has definitely been a symbol of surrender. Like I'm really struggling to surrender to myself and the moment that is in front of me. And I'm breaking down crying, screaming and running away from it at all times and refusing to do the work. And therefore I'm in this process of, um, let me write that word down. What's that word going to be? Um, resistance. Resistance to healing. Yeah, I can see, feel and be that. And, like, it's literally the self tearing the self apart. And the way that this expresses itself happens through biting nails. Let me write that down. Biting nails. And um, there's a bunch of ways that we tear apart the self. There's, I'm going to have to list all the shadowy aspects of all the ways that we self-destruct. Okay? And we put a distance. And then the, we have to also accept that some of us are saying we want to heal, but then the actions that we're doing clearly shows that we're not ready to heal because we don't want to do the work. Some of us don't even want to accept that we have to heal. We're, we're believing some type of story that just makes us feel better and keeps us distracted from the moment or like the past. Yeah, that could be the moment that like happened and lives on inside of you because you didn't let it die or um, the other way around. Moment happen don't let die 
lives on inside of you. <laughs> I'm taking all these notes. I'm like trying to remember like why is that so important? What what is that symbolism? Like there's something going on about letting go. Letting go. Um aha, that's surrender. Um the shadow, that's the shadow. Letting go, let go is the positive. I mean, I'm so confused. Like I'm like labeling as well. I'm trying to like integrate and create something that's simple and distilled and like cognitive and I'm just I'm not there. And until I can get there, I'm not going to be able to like give you my heart because like right now I'm giving you my broken heart. Some of you can hear and feel it and some of you don't even want to listen to this right now because it's like literally that painful to have to experience someone else's experience as your own. Okay. Um, I think, I think acting and all this stuff is going to come into this, like, um, cause you can like, it's like actors that play pretend and then they become the character. We have tons of like ways that this has expressed itself. Um, I guess that's where Mandela effect would also come in. I'm trying to figure out how all the pieces come together. Cause yeah, as you can see, I have all my scattered notes, but now I'm going to have to put things in categories and put them in the right places and figure out what I'm trying to say. And then also keep it around the same point, like making sure that I put all these different things together and like I'm really struggling so I'm going to have to like ground myself and anchor myself and do the work I need to do and for me that's going to be yoga eating bathing um, washing clothes I really don't want to do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and there's like a lot of excuses you know like oh um, I have a million excuses on why not to take care of the self excuse not to love or take care nurture there's all this stuff i'm thinking and assuming that this um project is going to be finished maybe after mother's day i thought it'd be like a great like gift to my mother or a great gift of like showing and saying thanks like i'm really 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 thankful for being alive um, that is kind of my hope and seed of intention and that you can share it with yourself. Um, I want to talk about um, like how man man comes from woman, you know, and where does woman come from? And then the whole like which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Um, kind of fascinated by that. I wanted to make sure that was there. I'm supposed to exercise all these algorithms and bring them all into one piece where you actually look at me and I'm all dressed up in the most perfect matrix way that says that I'm beautiful, which for me might look like no makeup or I don't really know how I'm going to choose to express myself for that. I do kind of want to really put it in my all and like be my very best of whatever I personally feel and think and be is my best. And I'm like attempting to like let go of everything that's not the best. Not the best for me, meaning that it makes me feel the best. You know, oh, what's not best? <laughs> See, what's also happening though is people are holding on to what they think and assume is the best. And like, since they're so hooked on having like their expectations, that's gonna be a shadow. <laughs> like, there's so much shadow, there's so much unseen and unknowing, and like, the reflections are just so similar. They're polarities, polarities and opposites. And then what else is happening is, did you know I hate myself so much that I refuse to listen to my own content? I almost never, ever, ever, ever listen to my own voice. I can't actually even remember a single time that I actually have. Um, but I'm going to have to listen to those two videos as embarrassing as they are and as humiliating as it is, accepting myself at where I was then. Just like a lot of the old past Trina videos, you know, I kind of feel that way about every single past Trina video because I am not that Trina. And everyone's going to judge the world as, or like judge... Everyone in the world is going to judge Trina as, like, whatever way that they had seen her express. And even if she changes, they still, like, label and condition her as being that past presence. And they just, like, don't love and respect the fact that, like, I'm omnipresent. I am not my past things. You know what I mean? Like, I don't deserve to be punished. <laughs> like, I have already paid my own suffering. And as if it's not a suffering in itself of having to accept that I have done and been there, etc. You know, that itself should speak for itself and more so the respect should be held that I have come from such an intimate dark place and come from come to heal uh, 
I'm getting notes. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for all your sacred space, for all your openings. Like, the select those of you who are continuing to invest in me. And not just, like, financially. Like, should I do a shout-out to the people who are? Like, I hate. In some levels, there is, like, a disgrace and, like, horrible negative programming around money. Like, I am not happy with that shadow. I'm supposed to talk about that shadow. Shadow of work. <laughs> I can't wait to write this. Like, and I really think I'm going to have to do this on the computer. And, like, I hate my computer. And I have all these stories why I hate my computer. And really, I just need to, like, let go of what's not, like, serving my best interest. Like, there are so many things in my life and around me that just don't make me feel good. And, like, I'm not in environments that make me feel really happy. And, frankly, the environment inside of myself isn't the happiest place, which is why I come here. And then it sucks, as I stated before, that means that I come here with all of that. I'm giving you all that negative language and my hurt, broken self, instead of coming here full of love and capable of acceptance of you. I'm coming here to release and to purge and to like integrate all these shadows that are just tormenting me that I felt like, you know, were really rich and valuable. And at the same time, I feel like in some levels they're meaningless if I don't share them and expand them, what I have gathered, you know, because I want to keep going. And I hope that you choose to continue watering me and that you have a seed of hope or faith or grace that like I can be myself and I can express myself and that I can find joy and give myself permission to enjoy and be in joy and to sit there holding space with everything that I choose and love. And what most of all that I feel like you need to recognize is that whatever you're doing is exactly that. And you can try to tell yourself a story otherwise, but if it was true, it would express itself differently. So what you shall allow shall continue. I'm going to have to end this now and attempt to realign myself with what is going on so that way I can continue the algorithm set in motion here. Thank you so much.